Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. But at the end of this video, I have a working theory around CBDCs. And I want to know what your opinions are on my theory. You could put it in the comments section down below. So we are looking at the one hour chart. And once again, XRP is back above 50 cents. I think we're most likely going to fluctuate between 50 and 55 cents once again, unless some big news comes out around XRP that sends it skyrocketing. What else showed up today was the big predictions for XRP once again. I seen somebody calling for a $1 million XRP. So the derivatives market is on the way. $11,368 per XRP. XRP is designed for $10,000 plus. So you see derivatives, commodities, corporate bonds, government bonds, and banknotes. Now this is if Ripple captures all of this. But they're not going to capture all of this. I think they're going to capture a decent percentage of this, and XRP is going to be sitting at a much higher price. But look at derivatives. Algo's tied into there. Corporate bonds, government bonds, XDC's tied in there as well. Then you got to look at XLM, also tied in a little bit. And then Hedera, they're coming after the same markets. All these ISO coins are tied to literally everything. You know, if you talk about carbon credits, you could name at least five of the ISO coins that are tied to carbon credits. You talk about transactions, every one of them is tied to that. What I'm saying is Ripple's not going to capture everything. They're going to capture percentages of each thing, pushing the price of XRP higher. What about the $10,000 XRP? Remember when Joel Katz used $10,000 per XRP as an example. Anytime somebody says the, that XRP is going to 10K, they usually cite David Schwartz. So the current minimum transaction fee is 10 drops. A drop is a millionth of an XRP. So even with no change in fees, if XRP somehow hit $10,000, the minimum transaction fee would be 10 cents. The minimum fee could be voted down to one drop. He said if XRP somehow hit 10K, he didn't say when XRP hits 10K. And, you know, I'm not going to rule it out. I Everything that I ever thought around XRP that was conspiracy theory is little by little becoming back. So I rule nothing out. Maybe XRP will hit 10K in the future. I know it's definitely going to hit some very high prices. Now, a lot of people talk about Chainlink, and I hold Chainlink. It's more of like data-driven, in my opinion. And I don't see it being utilized for transactions and settlement. That's what Ripple and XRP specializes in. And a lot of people are calling Chainlink the XRP killer. It is not. So take a listen to what Brad says here. Brad, uh, I'd like you to address some of the rumors settling around. I mean, the indications that perhaps uh, your biggest rival, Swift, will be joining you. Could you shed some light? Well, look, it, you know, Swift is owned by the banks, and we are here to help the banks. You know, we feel like blockchain technologies are a massive step function forward in terms of how correspondent banking has historically worked. The technologies that banks use today that Swift developed you know, decades ago is really hasn't evolved and kind of kept up with the market. And so we feel like we're here to help the banks. Swift is owned by the banks. There have been opportunities where maybe there's partnership opportunities. We haven't been able to bring those to fruition, but we're going to keep focusing on solving the customer problem. Uh, you know, Swift said not that long ago they didn't see blockchain as a solution to correspondent banking. Yeah, you know, we've got well over 100 of their customers saying that they disagree. So over 100 of Swift's customers disagree with Swift. Brad showing them a better option outside of Swift. And I think they like that option. They see value in it. And then you also got to remember, the BRICs are never going to choose to work with Swift. Swift was weaponized against Russia not so long ago. 
So I think even the BRICs are going to most likely utilize RippleNet and XRP. And if they were to do that, that would allow Ripple to capture even more business away from SWIFT. What I see going on is either Ripple and SWIFT have to partner together or SWIFT will be gone within the next five years. Now, you always heard about world's reserve currency, but where did that come from? So the world's reserve digital currency, $1,000 plus per XRP. Well, it comes from Ripple directly. With 2017 now well underway, we remain hard at work, focused on adding exciting new features to the RCL and improving their performance, stability, and quality of the Ripple open source code base. More importantly, we remain more committed than ever to the simple goal of making XRP the world's reserve digital currency. Recently, David Schwartz said there can be two world's reserve currencies. And maybe that is going to happen in the future. You also got to remember, the dollar is not going to disappear. Paper money is not going to disappear overnight. For a period of time, we are going to have digital money and paper money running parallel. And eventually, the paper money will disappear and we'll be left with just digital money. That's what I see coming in the future. But I don't even think XRP needs to be the world's reserve digital currency to get to $1,000. It could get there by just being the bridge currency that it's built to be. So, will a settlement between Ripple and the SEC come before the end of 2023? Now, this comes from Johnny Deaton, and a lot of people are saying a settlement's going to happen in September. So, a lawyer who follows the case closely said there is a chance of a settlement before the end of the year, depending on the outcome of another case involving Coinbase, the largest U.S. cryptocurrency exchange. Johnny Deaton, founder and managing partner of Deaton Law Firm, said in a tweet today that the only way Ripple and the SEC can reach an agreement in 2023 is Judge Catherine Polk Fayola's request to dismiss Coinbase lawsuit against the SEC. So we have to wait and see what happens with Coinbase before we see a settlement between Ripple and X and the SEC. But you know. People are calling this like it's already happening right now. But I don't like to call anything until it actually wraps up and we have the facts to prove it. So Ripple's XRP valuation catalyst for a game-changing IPO. This is all the talk, and the reason I'm revisiting this is because now it's getting out of hand. I see people saying once Ripple gets their IPO, XRP is going to easily surpass $1,000 plus, and that's not the case. So on Ripple's balance sheet, XRP has a zero value, but assigning a value to the token, even at its current state in the market, or even a higher one, will go a long way in boosting the entire valuation of the company. In the case where XRP hits its peak price, it might trigger outstanding investment opportunities. We have to see what kind of value Ripple gives XRP on their balance sheet. That will tell us where XRP is going. Most likely, it will take XRP to $10. That's what I see playing out. But people, they start at $10, then all of a sudden they push it to $100, then it becomes $500, then it's $1,000. Let's first see what happens with the valuation. So this is my theory, and it starts with this right here. We are in a silent depression. This is real food for thought. Take a listen to this are in a silent depression. When you compare the Great Depression to today, this is going to absolutely blow your mind. In 1930, during the Great Depression, the average home in America was $3,900. The average car was $600. And the average monthly rent was $18 or $216 a year. And the average salary was $1,300 for the year. Fast forward to today, it is $436,000 for the average home, forty-eight dollars for the average car, and the average rent is $2,000 a month or $24,000 a year, and, that is, and we have a $56,000 income for the average American right now. So if you look back to the Great Depression, 
the house was only three times the average salary. Now it is eight times the average salary. The car was 46% of the salary. The car today is 85% of the salary. And here's the craziest part. The rent was 16% of the average salary. It is now 42% of the average salary. So do you think we are living in a silent depression right now? And I'm going to show you what's really going on in this country right now. So domestically, higher risk means potentially loss for the kingdom. The billions in U.S. treasuries dumped by China and new BRICS member Saudi Arabia. Right now, we have countries that are dumping treasuries, you know, like uh, bonds, U.S. treasuries. And yet, people don't realize how big this is going to become. It's going to lead to more inflation, at some point, hyperinflation. And they're downplaying it for some reason. It's not talked about on the mainstream media news right now either. And at the same time, everybody outside of like any kind of thought process on the economy is just racking up more and more debt at the same time. And they're happy about it. You know, I see people buying new cars and they're always putting it all over Facebook and Twitter and they're like, look at the new car I just bought. And it's like, why would you buy a car right now? I think it's because our government pushed us into this idea that if you want to have things, you also have to take on a pile of debt. And I think they're trying to get people to use as many U.S. dollars as possible at the same time. So U.S. credit card debt has officially surpassed $1 trillion. This is not sustainable with credit card rates above 20%. And a lot of people are just defaulting on their credit cards at the same time right now. They're racking them up and just letting them go. And that's going to continue to happen at the same time. So here's how unaffordable the housing market has become. Today, Zillow announced that they will begin offering mortgages with 1% down. Meanwhile, other lenders are now offering 40-year mortgages. The monthly payment on a $500,000 home with 30-year mortgage and 1% down is $3,500 or $42,000 per year. That should be very concerning. And you know how they always say, by 2030, you will own nothing and be happy. We're already there. People own nothing because they owe money on everything that they have because they're in debt to own those things. You know, you go and buy a new vehicle. You're looking at $48,000 on average. And even if you buy a used vehicle, you're still looking at somewhere between nine and 18 k And then on top of that, you still got to maintain rent or your mortgage, you got to maintain the food budget, which continues to go up. Then you got to maintain the gas budget, which is also going up. Do you see where this is going? We already own nothing because they rigged the system against us a long time ago. Tesla offers an 84 month, seven year auto loan on its electric vehicles. So, you know, when somebody goes and they look at a car, and they're going to buy a new car, all right? Most of the time, it's just a five-year loan, and the payments are much higher. So how do they push you into an EV? They allow you to take out a seven-year loan, so the payments are cheaper, and it looks more attractive to buy an EV at the same time. Now, here's my, th my theory right here. Remember, a CBDC is going to be a chip. We've learned that over time from the World Economic Forum. And they even put articles out like this. Anti-chippers are the latest group of awful people we now have to worry about. They're paranoid. They don't believe in science. Listen, science doesn't need to tell me to get a chip put in my arm. I'm never getting that chip. Even if I gave up all my crypto, I still would never take that chip. You know, if, if it came down to it, I would just get rid of all my crypto. I don't even care because this is not for me. But how would they get this chip into you? Now, in the last video I showed you around this, I showed you how people are playing video games. They're going to be offering free money so people could sit at home and do whatever they want. 
but a lot of people would still fight back against the chip. But what if you're rolling, say, a hundred grand in debt, and they came to you and said, hey, listen, we have an alternative for you. We'll wipe all your debt. All you have to do is take the new CBDC. I'm sure a lot of people would go in that direction. And that's one reason that I don't like to roll debt. I've ended up in debt after COVID. And I rolled that debt for a couple of years. I'm gradually getting out from underneath that debt. Because once you have debt, they have the upper hand on you. And I think a lot of people will fall into this. The people that are very cautious not to get the chip, this might make it more attractive is what I'm saying. But, you know, I'm an XRP investor. I still maintain the idea that my XRP is going to skyrocket. And maybe I could cash out. Maybe I could somehow get around this CBDC by having money in the future. Who knows? And who knows if we are ever going to see this chip. I know they're pushing for it, but it doesn't mean it's going to definitely happen either. But what's your thoughts on that? Put it in the comments section down below. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.